this is in reference to uh, Ron DeSantis uh, quietly signed a bill. Yes, he did. Oh boy, you see, this is one of those things where I continue to tell people we need to pay attention to what's happening with local politics. I do feel like while mainstream media had a lot of people focus on Trump's legal issues, I feel like quietly behind the scenes, you had state lawmakers passing legislation and signing legislation that could really hurt people in their state. And at the same time, I feel like a lot of people weren't paying attention to it because the media had you so focused on Donald Trump. And this is one of those examples. And if you have not heard this, hold on to your seatbelt for this one, regardless of how you feel about a woman's right to choose or not. This measure is risky, and I'm going to explain to you why. So in recent news, Florida's legislature passes a six-week abortion ban. Six weeks. We're going to get into a little bit of the details here. Florida's Republican-dominated legislature passed a ban on most abortions after six weeks Thursday, sending the bill to Governor Ron DeSantis, who has said he would sign it. By the way, he did sign it. We'll get to that. Final passage came after a marathon floor hearing in the State House, which passed the proposal largely along party lines in a 70 to 40 vote after the Senate passed it on April 3rd. Oh, boy, 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 boy. Now, the name of this bill is called SB 300, just in case you want to look this up on your own. SB 300. It says here, it capped off what has been a hugely contentious process to pass the legislation, SB 300, which DeSantis has, signed, has signaled support for, but it puts him in a tricky political position. He is considering a 2024 bid for president, but most public polling show a six-week abortion ban is unpopular among both political parties. This is the piece everybody needs to pay attention to. Yet at the same time, entering a Republican presidential primary on the heels of vetoing or opposing legislation that would expand abortion restrictions, risk running against a key tenant of the GOP platform. And here are protesters outside here. This is the piece I want to focus on, the details here. The measure would ban abortions after six weeks of pregnancy with new exceptions for rape and incest up until 15 weeks. The measure would not change the exceptions for the life and health of the mother up until 15 weeks that are in current law. The new exemptions were sought by Republican Senate President Kathleen Pasitimo and agreed to by other Republicans. The bill also includes $25 million to expand Florida Pregnancy Care Network, a statewide network of nonprofit groups that offer pregnancy support services. Let me explain to you why the six weeks is problematic for those who are not aware. It is not uncommon for a woman to not know that she is pregnant at six weeks. Now, some of you may wonder, how can that be? How can that be? Wouldn't she know when she misses her period, her menstrual cycle? Not necessarily. If you are a female that does not have a regular menstrual cycle, you may not notice. Not to mention that some women have been known to still have their menstrual cycle while they are pregnant. This, these things happen, we need to talk about this. But not only that, even if you are one of those that has it uh, regular, regularly, that still doesn't mean that you would know at six weeks. So this is a big problem. And all I can say is this, listen, I grew up during a time when teen pregnancy was a big issue in this country. Teen pregnancy rates have gone down because of access to contraception, birth control, and education about sex. <laughs> Let's just be real. I have known teenagers that had to have an abortion. 
And one of the things that I see happening with this is that once again, teen pregnancy rates are going to increase. Watch. You never know the reason. And honestly, I don't need to know your reason why you need to have one. It's really none of my business. But some people have had to have one because of medical reasons. But six weeks is risky. Now, I want to take you to this clip here from CNN because they discussed this, or excuse me, MSNBC, because they discussed this as well on Morning Joe. Let's get into it. Also in Florida today, Governor Ron DeSantis signed a six week abortion ban into law. Did that last night in a move that may underscore just how controversial the bill is. DeSantis announced the decision with a tweet just after 11 p.m., hours after the ban was approved by the Republican controlled state legislature. Just two out of 28 Republicans in the Florida Senate voted against the bill, which does make exceptions for pregnancies involving rape or incest up until. That piece I did want you to hear that there were two Republicans that voted against it. Until 15 weeks. Those exceptions, however, will only be allowed if a woman has documentation like a restraining order or a police report. This is another big part of the problem. The exceptions in reference to sexual assault must have documentation. Police report restraining order. This is going to cause a slippery slope of things because I'm just going to be honest with you. Trusting someone to have a police report to say that, yes, this person was a victim of sexual assault. Most incidents of sexual assault are not reported. Not to mention, we did a whole panel on this show last year where we talked about the statistics of police departments that don't even process rape kits. They just throw them out. Two, just because someone has a police report doesn't mean that they were actually assaulted. This is, this is a problem. I'm just gonna keep it real. This is a slippery slope. Because like I told you, usually these incidents are not investigated in the way that they should be. A lot of the police departments get rid of the rape kits. So what is that piece of paper going to do for you? And why should you have to have the piece of paper? This is bad. This is bad. This piece here, exceptions for life slash health of the mother up to 15 weeks. What happens to the women who are pregnant that have health issues after the 15 weeks. There was just five women in Texas who announced they were suing the state of Texas because they ran into that particular issue where they had complications after that time period and the state would not allow them to have an abortion. This, this is scary. This is very scary. Let's go on a little bit. The bill does not change current exemptions for the life and health of the mother, still though up to 15 weeks. The new law will only take effect if the state's current 15 week ban is upheld. That ban, which DeSantis signed into law last year, is the subject of an ongoing legal challenge before Florida's conservative controlled Supreme Court. So, uh, Jen Palmieri, this is uh, just another chapter in what we've seen really just in the last couple of weeks, but in the last almost year now since the overturning of Roe. In Wisconsin, in the state legislature, abortion was a central issue. That Texas decision by a judge out there uh, really putting on hold or banning the abortion pill, and now this in Florida, a six-week extreme abortion ban. The, um, I mean, and I love that DeSantis tweets this after 11 o'clock at night as if then people yeah. aren't going to, aren't, aren't, aren't going to notice. Um, yes, I have to mention this here. I almost did forget to mention is that Ron DeSantis signed this bill in a private meeting at night. Kid you not. But recall the 15 week ban, which that that's also what the uh, Mississippi law was um, in the Dobbs case. Um, 15 week ban a year and a half ago, we thought was extreme. Um, 
Lindsey Graham offered that as the alternative, the moderate alternative, as you recall, in the um, in the midterms. And it, even though politics is clearly against the Republicans on this, like you see it in you, you yep. see it in Wisconsin, we saw it in the midterms every week. It seems there's another example of why it's bad politics for them. He then goes with a six week ban because he thinks that's going to be popular in a Republican presidential primary. And like no. there is the vice. And um, I mean, the politics of this are clear, but it's also we need to remember the impact, the the rulings on the abortion pills, the impact that this is having on on women. I mean, you, you just read off the list. If if if, you, if there is a a rape or incest, uh, the own how the how onerous it is for the woman to uh, to prove that. Um, yep. But when you look at the politics, this I you. you the Republicans intellectually will be saying, we've seen reporting on this, we know we have a problem here, we know that the abortion positions are too extreme, um, but then you have people like DeSantis, you know, second, number two in the presidential primary, pushing forward with a more extreme ban. If he is still considering running for president in 2024, I do not believe that this would work in his favor if this is his idea for the, for the rest of the country. I do not feel that this it is actually going to help him. All you have to do is look at the polls. The polls show that now when it comes to abortion, it's not just Democrats, even though some Democrats oppose it, it's not just Democrats, there are also Republicans who agree with the woman's right to choice, uh, to choose. You have to look no further than looking at a state, a red state like Kansas, that just chose to protect a woman's right to choose. Now we went through this when we were going through the ballot initiative states. I still have a couple to go through. When we went to Kansas, we got to that state. Remember, that was one of the key measures that I honed in on. A red state chose to protect a woman's right to choose. I don't think this is going to be the popular issue that Ron DeSantis thinks it's going to be to help him win. I don't think that would help him win, not today. Not today. We'll play a little bit more and then I have something else I want to show you in reference to this as well. I'm going to show you that bill. And Joe, if Ron DeSantis does run for president, if he does somehow find his way to the nomination, good luck pivoting to the general after this, a six week abortion ban, which is something like a 15 percent position nationally. But let's look at the state of Florida and how it's changed even since you were in Congress there. Um, what do you make of this six week ban now in your home state? Well, it's going to be a problem for Ron DeSantis, uh, like you said, or any Republican that gets behind this in a general election. We've seen this time and time again. The Republicans know what the politics are for an abortion ban in a general election, and Republicans apparently don't care. And so Florida is one of those states, again, we always think of it as a Republican state, and we've always thought of it as a Republican state. And then Barack Obama wins it. I think Bill Clinton won it uh, uh, one, one of the two times that he ran. Um, and and I suspect, again, right now it's breaking red. Uh, it, Trump obviously won by three or four points there. But I will tell you, uh, there are a lot of people in Florida, as everybody watching this show knows, that moves down from the Northeast, that moves down from the Midwest, that moves down from places that have a much more moderate view of the issue of abortion. And they move forward anyway. Of course, as you noted, it's why he signed it at 11 o'clock at night. I suspect if this had come out right after the Dobbs decision, before Republicans understood the wicked backlash that they're getting politically on these near uh, abortion bans, some of these more extreme bills, he may have signed it in the middle of the day, brought legislators around, but instead signed it at 11 o'clock last night and tweeted out the picture. That is not a man who wants this to be front and center of the news today, but it is. Eugene Daniels, or I'm sorry, Eugene Robinson. Uh, uh, um, yeah, wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm in a different time zone here. Uh, gotcha. Eugene Robinson, <laughs> um, it, you look at Wisconsin. Here's yeah. a state that, that I was calling, I think we were all calling perhaps uh, the tightest swing state in mm -hmm. America. Uh, but I, I don't think it's fair to make the comparison between Wisconsin and Florida because I have to just flat out say this. Florida is not a swing state. Okay. 
It may have been back when Obama won. Guys, that was a long time. That was 08. That was a long time ago. And if I remember correctly, I don't think Obama won Florida in 2012. I have to go back and check. But it's not a swing state anymore. Florida is a red state. And I think MSNBC and CNN, they just need to accept that. That is exactly what it is now, regardless of how many people from the Northeast are moving down to Florida, okay? <laughs> what Joe's trying to tell you. It's red. Exactly, Ryan. Florida is red. So remember, Ron DeSantis just won re-election, what, last year? So if people were in Florida, if they were that concerned about this, Remember, they voted for him again, overwhelmingly. It's not like it was close between him and Rick. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Now, I want to show you something in reference to this measure in, in particular, because I always like to point people to the legislation itself. If you go to the Florida House of Representatives website, you can take a look at this for yourself. Let me see if it'll let me go a little bit. Yeah, because the text is mad small. There we go. Again, the name of the bill is SB 300, Pregnancy and Parenting Support. And it says here, Citing this act as the Heartbeat Protection Act requiring the Department of Health to contract for the management and delivery of parenting support services. In addition to pregnancy support services, prohibiting physicians from knowingly performing or inducing a termination of pregnancy after gestational age of the fetus is determined to be more than six weeks rather than 15 weeks with exceptions providing an exception if the woman obtaining the abortion is doing so because she is the victim of sexual assault or human trafficking subject to certain conditions requiring that medications intended for use in a medical abortion be dispensed in person by a physician, et cetera. So now you got them telling doctors how to do their jobs. And then we go on here. And it shows you the Senate referrals on the health policy, seven yay, four nay, on the fiscal policy, 12 yay, seven nay. But that that is the bill. So if you live in Florida, please visit this website. You can see other bills that they're proposing now as well, which I think is important that you keep up to date with this because you don't know what else is coming down the pipe. But I will go on to say this as well. This is very scary. I just told you some of the problems that are going to happen with this type of bill. I also want to show you the spread across the South because this is something I predicted when Texas made their move. Now, if we go back up to the top here, this video, they show it right up here at the top free press play. Let me see if I can get back to it because it had that map. It's hard to see the line on this video for some reason. I hate these kind of videos when they do it like this. Let me see if I can restart. Oh, here, here we go of this region you've got alabama mississippi louisiana with all out bans you've right there this is what i wanted you guys to see now let's remember we started with texas i predicted this would happen that it would make its way east louisiana mississippi alabama georgia now you have florida South Carolina is coming up next. And I lived in, look, I lived in South Carolina. I lived in Georgia. I would not be surprised if South Carolina were to implement something like this as well. When we talk about the South, there's the South, there's the deep South, right? North Carolina might be a little bit more lenient because North Carolina has been moving a little bit more bluish, maybe baby blue, Carolina blue, as they like to call it. Uh, South Carolina is still definitely conservative as hell. I'm just telling you from experience. So I can see South Carolina picking that up. Then we have right above uh, Mississippi and Alabama, you have Tennessee. Come up here for a little bit. 
You have Tennessee. I could see Tennessee maybe swinging that way. This is exactly what I was afraid of. This is why I said I didn't want this to be left up to the states because I knew that all it would take is one state in the South to implement a strict version of this and it will spread to the other Southern states. Now I'm in Massachusetts. Some would say that I'm safe. But not everybody lives here. Not everybody lives in Massachusetts. Not everybody lives in California. And people shouldn't have to move to these states just so that they can feel safe about their right to choose. Look at the spread. Got Georgia with a heartbeat ban, which is very similar around six weeks, right? And now with Florida passing the six week ban, that essentially turns this entire area into a place where it's going to be really, really difficult for women to access abortion care. It means women in Florida are now having to travel uh, over several state lines, likely, in order uh, to get that kind of access. And, and Democrats say, look, at six weeks, a lot of Folks don't know that they are pregnant. Republicans, on the other hand, are celebrating this for the most part. Some are even telling me that uh, this six-week ban did not go far enough. Some would like to see it go further and look a little bit more like those other states I mentioned that have those, those all-out bans. Uh, but at the end of the day, today we saw a very heated uh, day in Tallahassee here where protesters uh, came to the Capitol. They were demonstrating here outside of the chamber and inside as well. In fact, that one moment moment, uh, the speaker had to clear out the gallery because of the tensions inside. Take, uh, take a look. You have responsibilities to maintain the decorum in the Florida House. If you can't maintain the decorum, I will ask the sergeant to escort you to a room where you can watch the proceedings on the television. Some some Democratic lawmakers also joined protesters out here for a few moments. There's not much Democrats can do right now because they are the minority here, though some have talked to me about trying to propose potentially uh, getting this on the ballot as a as a ballot proposition in 2024 and leaving it to the voters. So that might be a difficult uh, challenge because of the way Florida structures those rules. So what the path ahead looks like for those against this bill, uh, not not so clear, Hallie. Well, President Biden is continuing his video. Okay, so that's important for people to see. There was a video, I was trying to find it. I don't know what I did with it, but there was a video on TikTok that I showed a while back where it was a young woman explaining that she really believed that this overturn of Roe v. Wade from the Supreme Court, that this was actually more about capitalism and about creating more workers. They want you to have more babies so they'll have more workers because the childbirth rate is declining in this country, particularly among those that are part of my generation, that are millennials, and those that are Gen Z as well because people just can't afford to have any damn kids. Like That's a bit, just a big reality of, of it. So as the childbirth rate declines, that means that there are less potential workers available in the future, less people to do the labor. And she had a great like layout of it. I just couldn't find the video, but sorry about that. But everyone needs to pay attention to what's happening here. Need to pay attention. I still go back to the fact that they had the majority and they were not serious, serious about codifying Roe v. Wade into law. Neither was Barack Obama, even though he promised to do it, then took it back. Neither was Bill Clinton. And here we are. This is not just on the Republicans. The Democratic Party is to blame for this as well. All righty. Angela says, this is an attack on the poor. The rich will be able to abort all day long. That's right. Well, especially wealthy women, they'll be able to travel outside the country and get these done as they have before. When it was illegal in the country, they still were able to get them done. Thank you for this super chat, Zach. If only there existed a large group of voters and activists dedicated to my body, my choice. Unfortunately, we're surrounded by bodily autonomy haters. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself, Zach. Uh, scientific lens. Somebody didn't codify Roe when they promised to. Bing, 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 bing. There you go.